Thank you very much. Uh, you may wonder how exciting something could be that's 30 years old, but we almost lost all these 50 videos that we did. They were inaccessible for a considerable period from approximately 2009 to 2018. And I had all these tapes in my garage and uh, I believed that the tapes were worthless, but I thought, well, in the outside chance there's still something there, I'll check it out. And every single tape from the 1990s onward was readable. So we uploaded them all to YouTube. And so in a sense, it's a very recent collection, even though the uh, interviews that Stuart and, and I did and uh, directed between 1990 and 2007 and were, of course, done quite, quite a long time ago. This has been added to, as many of you know, by the European Pioneers uh, collection, which is still going on and probably involves some of you in this audience. So, uh, Klaus Brun was one of the early interviews from 94, and we've been showing it here. It's quite interesting. The first kidney biopsy, and he shows how the biopsy was actually done and the background of it. And uh, Donald Selden is our most popular interviewee with over 500 views. And this is what is called an audience retention graph showing when people go back and re-watch sections. And every time somebody goes back and re-watches a portion, then you get one of those peaks. Now, when you think about indexing videos, you probably think you would just index it like you'd index anything else, giving the full content. And if you do that, people have no incentive to watch the video. So it guarantees that people are not going to watch the video. In 30 seconds, they can read the content of the video, and they go on to something else in their life. So what we have found is much better is to take these peaks, as mysterious as they are, and to simply recite what's going on at those points as a kind of indexing. And that, this is what that looks like for the Selden interview. And you can see this is not just the whole content. This gives you little glimpses into what things interested people within that content and uh, is just intriguing enough that you would want to actually watch the video, which is our, our intent. Now, in a few minutes from now, we're going to show you a portion of this video uh, from uh, 27 minutes to 36. So approximately in through here, uh, where you see it's a mixture of like faculty recruitment and music. Uh, this is an alphabetical list of the interviews that Stuart and I had done during that 17-year period. And uh, now uh, we are planning a searchable, searchable database for the whole 170 to 200 videos, so you'll be able to endlessly search by name and, and country of origin and subject matter and, and so on. And that will be coming in 2020, the searchable database. Georgina Piccoli and Pierre Ronco, well known to many of you, um, they were in charge of the European Pioneers video series, which has now been merged with our series and is all on my YouTube channel which has the very obscure designation uh, user slash Kim Solez. And if you go into that YouTube channel, you can see all 164 of the videos in the playlist there. Now, there's a way to think about kidney medicine origins here, and that is beginning with Richard Bright and going through 1960. You may conceive of it somewhere where different, but <laughs> <laughs> That's the most useful way for us. So that gives you 31 names 
And you can see of those 31 names, a good number of them have video legacy interviews. And uh, Homer Smith's is the only one that is uh, intended to be humorous. Uh, the others are, are serious in nature. And um, so you'll have lots of opportunity to uh, hear them and watch them during this meeting and also forever afterwards. They're very easily accessed over the internet. Now, of those 31 names between R Richard Bright and other people in 1960, Neil Bricker, you can sort of draw uh, interesting parallels of, of, of uh, the, the references cited. So th this is uh, Bricker's intact nephron hypothesis paper and the, the uh, founders who are in that paper. And we intend to do a network analysis like that of all 31 people. And uh, uh, Antigone Oreopolis is, is sort of in, into this kind of thing and, and she will be helping us with that. You'll see her in an interview later on. Now what's the value of this? Why would you want to do this? Why would you care about the history? Well, the past is worthy of study because it has deeply influenced the running present and uh, the future. And I think that symmetry with the future is actually quite important. And uh, we've seen other timelines here during this meeting. Not so surprisingly, many people have an interest in timelines. But you uh, might not have thought about what a symmetrical timeline would look like. So if you start with uh, Richard Bright's book in 1827 and go to the present year, 2019, that's 192 years. You then go ahead 192 years. That would be the other half of the symmetrical timeline. And what do you think might occur then in 2211? Well, <clears throat> in, in, in predicting the future, there, there's uh, one gigantic miscalculation, and that is all of you can conceive of the next 20 years, so like until 2039, and the things you think will happen during that period, and not a single one of you thinks that you will upload your consciousness to an inorganic substrate within that period of time. But Ray Kurzweil, the most famous uh, futurist, has postulated that by 2039, that it will be successful and common and widespread to upload your consciousness to an inorganic, like ceramic slab. You can tell just sitting there that is not going to happen. So I'm postulating that it may be common and successful by 2211. And this will astound you. There is a short poem about this. Mind uploading scolding, a small disagreement of 172 years in arrears. Ray Kurzweil says we will be uploading mind successfully in 2039. The tech may exist, but our psyches will be nowhere near ready at that time. It will be 2211, another 172 years before it becomes routine, does anyone really believe that within 20 years, uploads will be on the scene? I must admit, I have a bias. I sort of like my humanness. I cannot believe we will so easily give up on our biology and trade our lives for some clunky clunk of machinery. You may have been impressed with those monoliths in the movie 2001. But that did not mean you were actually planning to be one. Ceramic slabs are shiny but limiting. I'll stick to my meat-based bo body for the time being. This, then, is the greatest failure of Kurzweil prophecy. And meanwhile, psychiatry will have a heyday as everyone dreads the day of upload and future plans are anything but solid. So that, believe it or not, is the last slide of this 
presentation. And then after that, <coughs> we will go on and listen to 13 minutes of Donald Selden. And then quickly after that, because you may have been intrigued by this Antigone Oreopolis, who is she? So.